myth. <laughs> yeah, for one of them, I was able to put down um, five percent because as yeah. a first-time home buyer, mm -hmm. um, so like one property cost me under ten grand to buy, yeah. which is which is cool. Which that definitely <laughs> makes it a lot cool. easier to acquire three properties yeah. in such a short period of time. What is up you guys? Matt McKeever here again. We're sitting down with Angie. So you probably remember Angie. We walked through uh, her third income property in five months a while back. And so we thought we'd sit down. Now that Angie's been a landlord for about uh, six months, I guess it is. Yep. Uh, let's chat through what, what are the surprises, good and the bad, the ugly, all that stuff. So cool. let's start off with, first of all, right before you start investing in real estate, what was the feedback you got from like friends and family, both the ones that do real estate and the ones that don't do real estate? Uh, the friends that don't do real estate yeah. or, or family that don't do real estate, they were all quite hesitant about it because you know you hear horror stories about yeah. tenants damaging your properties and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you know the cost to maintain a house is really expensive and yeah. all that. Um, but all the friends that did do real estate, they're like, yeah, you should do it because <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, and so now that we're six months in, mm -hmm. is it great or is it terrible or somewhere in between? It's really fun. Yeah. It's it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, what's been the worst experience so far. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get the ugly out of the way. Right okay. From the start. Um, I guess the worst experience so far has been that one of my houses got cockroaches, uh, <laughs> which is really gross. Um, but which I think a lot of people would immediately panic the moment they yeah. get cockroaches. Right? Yeah. And at first, like I was like a little bit like it's like I don't know what to do because I've never had to deal with that before deal with that before yeah. but uh, yeah uh, it just takes it so what, what ended up happening you call pest control <laughs> and they you pay the money and they get rid of the cockroaches so like a <laughs> lot of landlording problems really yeah. you throw money, money at it no yeah. yeah and yeah. so as far as did that really throw your budget out of whack compared to what you projected not really because it, it's only a couple hundred dollars to yeah. do so it's it's not a, it wasn't a huge expense yeah Awesome. And then, so as far as, let's talk about some other expenses. Were there any okay. surprises as far as good or bad? Like, or were your projections pretty on point as far as? Um, they weren't bad. Uh, you know, a couple appliances break down here and there um, that, you know, I wasn't really you know, planning on having it happen so soon yeah. and stuff. But uh, yeah, they're, again, like, you know, appliances don't cost too much money mm -hmm. if you buy them used and stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, so that's what you've been doing is yeah. buying the appliances oh, yeah. used. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So just through Kijiji? Yep, uh, and Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, that's one that's became way more popular yeah. recently. That's, uh, I actually prefer that a lot more because again, you're already on Facebook. And yeah. You can message the people, and it just goes to your Facebook messages, and it's mm -hmm. all it's all just right there. And I know I've heard from other people they find it less flaky than Kijiji. Is that your experience, or is it about the same level of flaky? Uh, I would say it's about the same, <laughs> okay. but yeah. Humans are humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk on the flip side of things then. What's some of the pleasant surprises? Surprises so far of being a landlord. Um, I guess the most pleasant surprise has been that my tenants are fantastic. Like I, I hardly hear from them. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I know I get an e-transfer once a month, and uh, yeah, I, I hard, I hardly hear from them. And, and so. Have you done things to try and really set that up, or is that something that just kind of organically happened that it's been fluid? I think easy? it just I think it just kind of organically happened because um, uh, you know the tenants that I either picked or absorbed, they um, you know they were already good tenants to begin with, and they just want to do their own thing, and yeah. you know it's their little house, they and they live their life, and um, you know I can relate because I rent myself, and yeah. um, you know I don't talk to my landlord like all the time either yeah. it just you know the money comes out once a month and and that's it right and i just kind of want to live my life and mm -hmm. yeah and so how often are you actually in contact with your uh, tenants because i know that's one thing a lot of people worry about just managing all these different people all these different relationships yeah uh it kind of varies i think at the beginning you're talking to them a lot more because when you just get a house you get like a lot of the problems happen within the first yeah. few months and so you're talking to them more and more but then after a while um you know you fix all the problems and then you, you don't kind of get streamlined exactly you get cadence and yeah rhythm. and then every now and then you know something comes up but, yeah so yeah. what's uh so we kind of went through the good and the bad. Yeah. Is there anything else people should know their first six months of landlording? Anything they should prepare for that maybe you hadn't originally seen? Yeah, I, I would budget a little bit more for maintenance. I didn't really, so, but luckily I had a little bit of reserve that I could just like, you know, throw a couple hundred dollars into, into the properties, whether it's like for appliance or cockroaches or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would, I would budget a little bit more for maintenance. 
Awesome. Sweet. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video with Angie. We're going to be doing a whole series of videos with Angie, just kind of talking about, you know, being a first time landlord, acquiring a couple properties in a quick period of time. I know that lots of people have tons of questions about that. So we'll definitely be answering some of your uh, comments. So jump in the comment section down below. If you got a question for myself or Angie, hit us up there as well. Angie, if people want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I guess you can, you can put my Instagram yeah, I'll put in the link in the below. video description down below. Yep. Awesome. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And until next time, remember, make money as a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point, guys? I don't Thanks. know. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> What is up you guys, Matt McKeever here with Angie. And so you guys probably remember Angie from previous videos on my channel and we thought why not sit down and that one video really popped off, there was tons of comments. We actually got over 84 comments on that video. Wow. So let's uh, sit down, we'll maybe dive through a few of them and just uh, clear up some maybe misconceptions or at, answer some questions that people have. So cool. the first one, and this was a common theme, was people saying that you must have had a lot of cash, a giant inheritance, that you must just be super rich or make tons of money. And so I think the reason that people jumped to that conclusion was buying three properties in five months. Yeah. You know, also, that was a clickbait title. That's probably why I got so many views. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually the truth. It was true. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let's walk through uh, what that truth looked like in your situation. But lots of people are able to acquire properties in quick succession, all using kind of different strategies. Yeah. So yeah, let's dive into Angie's. All right. Um, so yeah, like I, I did have a lot of cash saved up. Um, mm -hmm. I had, I've been saving since I was like a, a teenager. Yeah. Um, had a job since I was 13 and just have never been a big spender on mm -hmm. things yeah. really. Um, so I've always had that mentality. Um, yeah, so it wasn't. So essentially, this wasn't an overnight success story. This was no, saving no. money. Yeah. And while you were saving that money, obviously, you were also learning about real estate investing. Yep. And mm -hmm. so that was a big part of it too, right? Yeah. Just kind of while you're saving. Because lots of people, I think one of the problems that I see is people want to have everything perfect before they start anything. So they're like, oh, I'm not going to save money until I understand how to invest in real estate. Yeah. And I'm not going to invest in real estate and, and so like they end yeah. up in this like chicken or the egg situation. Oh yeah, and then it just never happens. Yeah. Or like even people just like waiting for their first property to be like the perfect property in terms of like the numbers yes. and everything and especially in this market, like you're not gonna get like mm -hmm. the perfect property. Yeah. Or it'd be very hard to. Yeah, 100% yeah. agree. Um, so let's jump to another one. So Steven commented, I bet the main banks didn't finance any of these deals. It has to be B lenders or private lenders to either acquire three properties in this short amount of time or must have a good debt ratio or some other help to get financing. So do you mind just kind of walking through how you- Myth. Yeah. <laughs> no, my, all my properties, uh, a lender. Yeah. yeah. And so it just a matter of like Angie actually uh, still rents. Yep. So one of them, like essentially that was your first property you bought ever. Yeah. So essentially you only have three mortgages total, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for one of them, I was able to put down um, 5% because as yeah. a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so like one property cost me under 10 grand to buy, which, yeah. is, which is cool. Which that definitely <laughs> makes it a lot easier to acquire three properties yeah. in such a short period of time. Yeah. And then so beyond that, do you mind just kind of walking through like, was it difficult like to get that first mortgage or the second or the third or were they easily like were they all at the same level of effort um they were pretty much all at the same level of effort um yeah my mortgage broker it didn't seem like she was struggling to get me you know the second yeah. one or the third one um my um debt ratios were fantastic because um I, w I was really lucky like i didn't really i didn't have debt graduating from university like my parents were um you know really helpful in that yeah. way of you know making sure i wasn't getting into the workforce and being um you know Bonnie, loaded with piles of Debt. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a full time job. Um, you know, it doesn't pay amazing, but, you know, um, I'm also very frugal. So that's I, a huge part. Like, at the it's, end of the day, it's so much. You can yeah. make a lot, but if you spend a lot, you're not you're so zero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I think far too often people think they need to be making six figures in order to save a down payment, but that's yeah. not the case. Oh, no. I'm so far away from yeah. that. Um, yeah. So let's talk through when you sat down with your mortgage break broker for yeah. the first mortgage. Did yeah. you explain to her that you were going to be doing multiple mortgages or like did you 
approach it with a strategy or just kind of one property at a time? Um, I did tell her that it was my goal in the future to, to acquire a lot of properties and mm -hmm. I think she did keep that in mind when she was, um, you know, working with the banks to try yeah. to find me the best rates. Yeah, and that's something I just kind of want to highlight for you guys. I think that that's really important. If you know that real estate investing is something you want to really take seriously, if it's something you want to grow, if it's something you want to commit a lot of time and money into, mm -hmm. Uh, again, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis, so you don't need the yeah. perfect business structure. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with making sure that your realtor, your lawyer, your accountant, and your mortgage broker or your banker are aware of the fact that you are focusing on growing a real yeah. portfolio of real estate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So then there's lots of positive... <clears throat> Jesus. <laughs> it's been a really long week. Right. <laughs> Words are not going to be easy today, apparently. Uh, so obviously there was tons of positive comments. So I just want to give a shout out to everyone that was positive in the comment section. I really love it when you guys support each other. I think that my little corner of the internet is kind of special. And the reason it's special is because of you guys and your love and your support, both of myself and my guests. And so I just, I really want to thank you guys as well. Keep that shit up yeah. because Let's keep my corner of the internet special. Yeah, I really appreciated that yeah. too. <laughs> well, because it can be scary for a lot of people when yeah. they're the first time guests on my channel because... Yeah, that was my first video and I didn't know what people were going to say. And you hear all the things about, you know, people just like bashing, you know, yeah. everybody on the internet. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to, you know, not have any mean comments. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. And as well, just so you guys know, I don't necessarily give a lot of my guests a ton of prep. Often I'm just showing up with the camera. So literally I just hopped in Angie's car with a camera and we started. So it's not like people get a ton of prep. Um, so I just kind of wanted to highlight this comment from Nicole. Okay. Uh, thank you for this, Matt, and thank you for sharing your story, Angie. As a single woman looking to get into real estate, it feels a little intimidating. This is very inspiring to hear your story. So I just thought that was great. I'm glad you got value from it, Nicole. And I think it's something we just kind of want to highlight that realistically, I know that real estate can be kind of a male dominated industry, yeah. uh, particularly with investors, but I really don't see any reason for that. It's not, there's no reason why a woman can't, single or otherwise, can't get into real estate investing. It's really just a matter of acquiring that knowledge. I think one of the fastest ways to acquire that knowledge is to get a mentor like Angie yeah. did. Oh, for sure, yeah. And then, yeah, again, not get stuck in the analysis paralysis. Yes. Yeah. Because the and definitely a uh, a mentor can be really helpful with that because it's someone to bounce ideas off of as oh, well as yeah. someone to review your spreadsheet. And yeah. So I'm sure Dan yeah. was critical in that as well. Oh yeah, I didn't have to do like a ton of. I mean, I should have. I should have done a ton of reading on it, of on yeah. real estate. I didn't really because yeah. I had someone to bounce everything mm -hmm. off and of. you came out to the meetups and stuff like oh that. yeah and yeah I really want to hit yeah. home on that too guys networking is so important it's it's everything it really yeah. is right mm -hmm. and especially like in London Ontario we now have this amazing community this yeah. amazing group of individuals but people need to understand that two and a half years ago it didn't exist at all like this in London it was simply the matter of like myself Kellen Dylan Michael Rosart deciding that we needed something so if wherever mm -hmm. you guys live you can do this too. You just need to plant the flag, start doing meetups. No one's going to show up at first. That's okay. <laughs> they will eventually come. If you build it, they will come, guys. Um, so then we had uh, Tyler Morris that just had a question. What sort of financing did you get for each property? So did you go with a fixed mortgage or variable mortgage? And how did you kind of decide that approach? Well, uh, I went with variable rates. Yeah. Because historically, it's good. Historically, it's always been yeah. pretty much the best. Yeah. yeah. I kind of wish I went with fixed just so that my payments would be consistent because yeah. the rates have been going up. So mm. I occasionally get letters from my bank <laughs> saying your rates are now this and I'm like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I think that's something to be important. That's something to be aware of for investors is, you know, depending on your risk profile, a lot of people just like the sleep at night factor, right? Yeah. So even if it's not the absolute most optimal approach, getting that fixed payment can just be a really comforting feeling yeah a security blanket right yeah oh i don't even think i saw this comment before but so there's a comment from trevor just saying angie is a good friend of mine and has <laughs> done wonderful work in real estate in a very short amount of time thanks to her i was able to connect with some of the communities in london and have now purchased my first property to house app and begin my real estate journey so you've already inspired someone yeah. to get to real estate yeah. and you've only been real estate for six months that's amazing yeah it's cool that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he got a good deal on, on the house too. I know exactly which house it was. And Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I guess, actually, maybe that's a great bouncing off point. So have you noticed a reaction from a lot of your friends and family now that you're kind of six months into it? Are they more, are they attracted to it more, real estate investing? I, th I think 
the people that weren't originally probably still wouldn't make that jump or that interest yeah. into it. I think they're more just like blown away that I've been able to do it. But yeah, I know they're still just not taking that approach to be like, you know, I wanted, how do we do this yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. with uh, Trevor, for example, was yeah. he kind of on the fence about real estate investing and then he saw your experience and that I think kind so. of yeah. gave him the courage? Yeah. It's something I see so often with people is they're kind of sitting there waiting for permission to make that jump, right? Yeah. And if you don't have, say, a mentor or a supportive community, it can be really intimidating to make that yeah. jump alone. Yeah. So I think that that's again another reason to network, guys. Just always be networking. <laughs> I think that might be my slogan. For yeah. Um, so one more comment I want to uh, address is uh, Kryptonian left a comment. Student rentals, new tents every year, trashing, police, no discipline. I don't feel so sure about student rentals. So this is something that comes up quite often when we talk about student rentals. So I wouldn't mind getting your perspective on it, as well as how you maybe got comfortable with the idea of a student rental. Yeah. Um, so I actually don't really have a student rental yet. yet. Yeah. Uh, it's in the process. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I've always been comfortable with it. Like I've been a student myself. And, and um, did you trash it? Were police called all the time? Uh, you no. Know, my girlfriends and I, we joke that like by the time we like left our house, like we like put more value into <laughs> it. Like we just took better care of it and kept it really clean. Like mm -hmm. that was our home. And yeah. I think if you get the right students, um, you're going to get that same thing. People yeah. who treat it like their actual home. So, how are you going to approach getting those right students? And like, have you sat down and chatted with Dan about his approach or? I'm uh, not there yet. The yeah. places still have to be a little, a little bit more renovated before mm -hmm. I do that. But in the next couple of months, I'll definitely be sitting down with him and um, asking him, you know, how do I pick the right tenants? Yeah. And so I know one more comment we had was in regards to location for student rentals. Oh yeah. And so they were asking how close does a property need to be? in order to be a student rental. Do you yeah. mind kind of sharing your perspective? Yeah, sure. Um, I've heard uh, different things from different people. Um, I personally think that like as a student, like I, I've been a student before mm -hmm. and I don't think um, being super, super close to the campus really matters. I yeah. mean, I, for some people, they want to be able to walk. Other people, they don't, they want to have that life that's like separate from the campus. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't think it, really matters what yeah. it is because I think you're going to find yeah you're going to find the different types of students some want to be further away some want to be right on campus mm -hmm. and so I guess I wouldn't know off the top of my head but the property you bought that you intend to turn into a student rental yeah that'd probably be at least be what 500 or 800 meters from the school with that like half a kilometer it's like a about a 15 minute walk yeah to the school so like you know it's a yeah. decent walk but at the same yeah. time there is transit on there I think right so people can probably like for half the way, yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, I see students walking there all the time. Yeah. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not concerned. That yeah, and it's I think be that that's far. actually a great tip: is be aware of the area you're investing in, yeah. and then actually check it out. Are there other student rentals? Because where you bought, there's tons of other student yeah. rentals there. Yeah, literally like across the street. Right. Like they're all student rentals. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I guess there's that whole townhouse yeah. complex. Yeah. Right. Um, Awesome. So that's it for this uh, kind of reviewing the comment section with Angie. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Otherwise, jump in the comment section, feel free to ask more questions, and uh, if we get enough, um, I'm sure we can convince Angie to sit down again and uh, dive into them. So until next time, guys, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye.